Hello chaps, how are you doing? John Robson here again from John Robson Guitar Tuition with another Harley Benton review. Today we have, let me consult my notes, the Harley Benton TE-40 TBK Deluxe Series. Yeah, once again it just trips off the tongue doesn't it? Uh, as you can see though, basically what it is, it's kind of a bionic telecaster. Uh, let's run down exactly what the construction of this guitar is. Uh, we have a basswood body with um, a carved ash top. You can probably see the carve there in the uh, as I'm holding it up to the camera. Um, we have a bolt-on maple neck uh, secured in the usual fender method of four screws and a plate. Um, we have 22 medium frets set into a rosewood fretboard, uh, a plastic nut, which, you know, it's nothing exotic like graphite or brass or tusk or anything like that, <coughs> just plain old plastic nut. Uh, Wilkinson tuners and the overall scale length is the 25 and a half inch fender scale length scale length rather. At the body we have a tunematic bridge with through body stringing that's where the strings come out at the back <coughs> and uh, two Wilkinson Alnico magnet humbuckers controlled by a master volume there you go and a master tone and a three way toggle switch Oh, we've gone out of focus. There we go, we're back. Um, this guitar cost uh, from Toman, the, I think it's the only place where you can get Harley Benton guitars. It cost, let me see, £128 delivered. So that's including delivery. Um, sorry, €128, Euros, £110. Um, it's slightly cheaper than the normal uh, recommended retail price because this is a B stock model. Uh, which shows, to quote, sl slight traces of use. I can't see any slight traces of use. It looks in absolutely mint condition. This gloss black finish really does show up um, every flaw and every thumbprint and every finger mark. Um, and there are no flaws in the finish, really. So. Um, somehow or other it's uh, it's kind of slipped through as a, as a B stock um, and it was a little bit cheaper the normal recommended retail price of these is about £120 delivered um, the fit and finish on this guitar is really rather good it doesn't look like uh, the photograph on the website though um, this black uh, colour on here is much much more opaque uh, and less transparent than the finish that you see on the photograph on the Tom and website. You can, if you get up close and personal with the guitar, just about see the lovely figured ash grain um, beneath this finish here, but I doubt if it's going to come across um, in this video. In fact, I can see from looking at the screen that it isn't doing, but it is there. You just have to kind of see it in the flesh. On the uh, photograph on the Tom and website, this looks more of a charcoal grey translucent kind of colour and that's not um, what what we get. I've heard uh, this is true of um, other Harley Benton guitars, uh, I've heard seen other reviews of um, like the PRS clone and other various guitars that they do where you know the colour in the flesh is not the same as it is on the website. It's not something that bothers me massively I'll be honest with you. Um, but you know the, the fit and finish is really rather good there are no sharp fret ends you know the, there's no kind of sticky out sharp bits out, out the side of the fretboard as you sometimes get on cheap guitars especially guitars in this price range um, the nut is might only be a cheap plastic nut but it is very very well cut this guitar um, is a bit of a first for me because it's the first time that I've ever taken delivery of a guitar and had to raise the action. Not because there was fret buzz or anything like that, somebody's done a really good job on uh, profiling and crowning these frets, they are lovely and level, but the action was just 
a little bit low for my tastes um, so I just took it up about a half a turn on the screws down on the bridge here and now it's it's still a low action but it's uh, it, it, it gives you the feel that you're actually playing something um, which I like. I'm not one of these sadomasochists who likes the action kind of you know that you could slice a hard boiled egg with or something uh, but I do like to actually feel like I'm pressing the strings down rather than just kind of um, you know, just touching them. Um, there's no fret buzz, there's no choking, the guitar is intonated perfectly um, according to my tuner anyway. Um, the uh, binding around the, the body is really super neat. Um, it is like a crisp white line. Looking at it side on like this it's kind of like looking at um, there you go, just hold it there so you can see. It's kind of like looking at a pint of Guinness with the kind of jet black and then the ivory white on top. It's really rather attractive looking. Um, just the overall look of the guitar, it's kind of, to my eyes, it, it's sort of got a, a little bit of the Steinway Grand Piano kind of look about it. Do you, do you see what I mean? I know what I mean. Um, the feel of the guitar is really very comfortable. This um, carve on the back here, you can see we've got the, the kind of uh, belly cut or the rib cage contour or whatever you want to call it. That coupled with the, the sort of carve on the front of the guitar, it really does feel kind of more like a Strat when you're holding it than a Telecaster. Uh, it pretty much disappears as you pick it up and, and start playing it. It's, um, you know, it's a very comfortable guitar. Um, the neck is very similar in feel to, well, any modern Fender really. Um, I think Fender call it the, the modern C profile. Um, neck. It's perhaps got a little bit flatter fingerboard radius. I'd say that this is at least a 12 inch fingerboard radius. I could look up the figures, <laughs> but I don't have them to hand with me here. It's a very, very comfortable neck to play on. Low action, comfortable neck, you know. That's um, that's a lot to ask for in a cheap guitar and this one delivers. So, how does this guitar sound? Uh, I recorded a, a short piece with this, it's only about a minute long, um, but you'll hear various different sounds uh, that this guitar is capable of. It starts off with some clean, funky kind of chord playing on the middle pickup setting. Uh, it then goes into some power chords on the bridge pickup. Um, a melody then emerges also on the bridge pickup with kind of a high gain ish sort of sound. Uh, after that, it goes into some sort of jangly, arpeggiated uh, open chords, uh, again using the bridge pickup. Um, then another melody comes in using a high gain sound, this time on the neck pickup and then I flick to the bridge pickup for the end for a bit of an improvised solo. The uh, sounds that you're going to hear were all uh, coming from my Vox Tone Lab ST. The clean sounds were uh, on a Fender Brownface Pro amp model and all the dirty sounds were using a Soldano amp model uh, with just a little bit of um, chorus on the clean sounds and a bit of reverb and a little bit of reverb on the dirty sounds. So without any further ado, here's the piece that I recorded earlier before I'd been for a haircut, as you'll probably tell, and this is what this Harley Benton sounds like. Enjoy!
Right, so that's how she sounds. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm quite impressed with that. It's a very grown-up sounding guitar for, as I say, about £110 or £120 if you pay for one that isn't a B-stock model. Um, interestingly, if you look at the um, where the bridge pickup is, it's quite a way in front of the bridge. Normally a bridge pickup is kind of way back here somewhere, but this is quite a bit further forward. And that lends it something of a, a strat kind of tone if, I don't know if you noticed that when um, you were listening to the demo but it, it certainly to me it has especially in the middle pickup position where you've got both pickups on together it's got almost that kind of stratty quack to it um, and uh, I quite like that yes um, the overall tone is very very fendery as you heard and you know I wasn't sure what to expect when I ordered this guitar. I didn't know whether it was going the twin humbucker guitar was going to make it sound kind of Gibson-y or whatever. But you know, it's a 25 and a half inch scale length with a uh, with a bolt-on neck and a fixed bridge. It's got a lot of Telecaster DNA in it, in other words, and it um, I think that's reflected in the sound. It's got a very kind of open um, twangy sound almost. Um, I own. Uh, another two electric guitars, I own a Les Paul type guitar and a Telecaster type guitar and this kind of sits somewhere in between them in terms of tone with that little bit of uh, strattiness also in the mix as well. Um, is there anything that I would change about this? Well not immediately, no to be honest with you. Um, Past experience has taught me that this gold plated hardware like the tuners and the bridge and the, the volume and tone controls, um, after a few months they never look particularly at their best. You know, you, you can either, you've got two choices, you can either, um, you know, clean the muck off them and the, the sweat and the dust and the, the sort of everyday grime that gets embedded in a guitar through just normal use. You can either clean that off and in doing so you'll probably end up taking the, the some of the gold finish off or you can just leave it and let it get all crusty and pitted and not looking particularly attractive either way. So at some point um, one, once that's kind of starting to show a little bit of wear I will probably replace the uh, the hardware with possibly gold again but then again it's just you know it's going to be another replacement um, a little while after that when that starts to look a little bit uh, grubby so I may just go with jet black we shall see um, it's a decision for the future that um, it has to be said that cheap guitars have come on in leaps and bounds in recent years anybody who like me has got a few miles on the clock and can remember the awful cheap guitars of um, the 70s or even the 80s and the 90s. I mean, did, does anybody else remember the Marlin Sidewinder or horrible plywood strap copies made by companies that you don't hear from anymore, like Vesta? And yeah, uh, some horrible guitars for you know around about 100 quid 20 25 years ago. And you know, 100 quid 20 25 years ago was. What, I don't know, at a guess more, probably like 200, 300 quid in today's money. So the value of this th that this guitar represents is absolutely astonishing. Um, I may end up using this as a modification platform, you know, put some, um, you know, some boutique pickups into it, some Seymour Duncans or Bare Knuckles or whatever. But to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of happy with it, the way it sounds. Um, so I don't see any need to uh, make any changes to this guitar it's just a nice addition to the uh, to the toolkit and frankly for 120 pound delivered to your door in three working days it took what more do you want the only one thing i would say about this when it came i've, I've sung its praises um quite loudly it seems uh, it's not without its faults. The only main fault I would say is that the fingerboard did feel a little bit dry uh, when it turned up. But I've had that on guitars that cost much more than this, and it's easily sorted. Just get yourself some lemon oil, or I've been using this stuff. This uh, Doctor Duck's Axe Wax and String Lube. Yeah. <laughs> 
and a couple of goes over with a soft cloth on the fretboard with that and it's already starting to feel much more like an expensive guitar, like the expensive guitar that it looks like. Right, there you go, that's the review of the Harley Benton, what is it again? Um, the Harley Benton TE-40 TBK Deluxe Series kind of steroid enhanced Telecaster. That's what it looks like, that's how it's built and that's how it sounds like. If you're thinking about buying one, just do it. Um, it's just the bargain of the year really. And with that I'll sign off and stay tuned for the next video that I put up. I don't know when that will be but it will be sometime soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye now.